Story recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a fantasy film called Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In sunny Florida, Jake Portman is a teenager who feels like he lives a mundane life. He works at the local supermarket and is constantly bullied by his peers. The manager, Shelly, approaches him regarding a phone call waiting for him. She drives him to his grandfather, Abe, but he warns Jake not to visit him that day because it is dangerous. Over the phone, Abe seems paranoid and frantic, but this does not bother Jake as he knows that his grandfather is diagnosed with dementia. At the street of Abe's house, Jake and Shelley spot a man with white eyes in the middle of the road. The man's eyes are white, and he gives off a menacing vibe. As they make it to the house, he finds out that it is wholly ransacked, and Abe is nowhere to be found. He alarms Shelley that someone broke in, so she goes back to the car to find a gun. In the nearby woods, Jake sees Abe's flashlight from a distance. He comes toward it to investigate and finds out that it is completely drenched in blood. He goes deeper into the woods and sees his grandfather lying unconscious, with his eyes missing. Jake contacts 911 to ask for help. In the middle of the call, Abe grabs Jake's arm to warn him that he should go far away. Before his last breath, he tells Jake to go to the island and go to the loop of September 3, 1943. Jake is very puzzled by his grandfather's words, but he promises to do as he says, anyway, Abe dies on the spot. As Shelley approaches them, a sinister-looking creature emerges from behind. Shelley shoots, but it appears that nothing is there, and only Jake can see it. After the traumatic incident, Jake goes to therapy for mental assessment. He explains to his therapist that he is not sure if something is wrong with him. The whole situation of Abe's death deeply confuses him. This takes a toll on his mental well-being. He recalls the time when Abe told him fantastical stories about encountering monsters and other mythical creatures. However, Jake's father, Frank, was not too keen on the stories that Abe told. Whenever Abe told stories about a group home for children managed by Miss Peregrine, he also showed pictures to Jake. According to Abe, he used to live in that magical home. Every child in the house is unique in their ways, they possess strange abilities, far from human knowledge. Little Jake asked Abe why he got sent to that island. He explained that it was because of monsters, Jake significantly believed that he even shared them with his peers. Because of this, he became a laughingstock. As Jake grew older, he stopped believing Abe's stories. His grandfather was deeply saddened by this but understood everyone's doubts. While putting things in boxes, Frank tells Jake that while Abe was a good grandfather, he was not a great husband and father. After, they drive home, Jake's family and other relatives surprise him for his birthday. He does not seem thrilled, and it somewhat overwhelmed him negatively. Instead of mingling with other people, Jake heads straight to his room. He is not entirely free because his aunt enters and gives him a book from Abe. The book is by Ralph Waldo Emerson, which contains a postcard from Miss Peregrine welcoming him to return. Her home is located in Cairnham, an island situated in Wales. His parents consult Dr. Golan about going to the island. She encourages Jake's parents to allow him to go there for him to be able to separate reality from fantasy. Also, to properly have closure on Abe's sudden death. On the ferry, Jake and Frank spot a peregrine bird just above them. In Abe's stories, he used to say that Miss Peregrine could turn into a bird. Remembering that, Jake jokingly shouts and introduces himself to the bird as Abe's grandson. They reach the island, and a foggy and dull atmosphere welcomes them. Both of them stay at an old pub that also accommodates travelers. Jake looks around the place as the owners arrive, it frightens him. Jake convinces his father to let him go to the home of Miss Peregrine. Both of them approach a group of youngsters to ask if some of them could guide Jake to the side of the island that he wants to see. They agree as Frank hands them some cash. Dylan and Worm, his guides, accompany Jake to the place. They decide to take a shortcut. The two make fun of Jake and point in the direction of the house while they wait by the road. Finally, he sees the house and finds out that it is already in ruins. He returns to the pub disappointed. Augie, a blind man, explains to Jake that the Germans actually bombed the house on September 3, 1943. He continues to say that none of the children survived, including Miss Peregrine. The following day, Jake asks permission from his father if he could go and hang out with the teenagers he met yesterday. His father agrees and thinks that it is a fantastic idea, given that Jake lacks friends, but Jake heads to the children's home instead. He looks at the pictures covered in dirt and examines the area even more. He sees a staircase and decides to go upstairs. Out of nowhere, he sees a silhouette of a young lady. She calls him Abe. This shocks Jake, making him run downstairs. He starts to notice other children peeking at him. Jake dashes out of the house, but he trips and falls unconscious. 
He wakes up to find himself being carried by Bronwyn, a little girl with incredible strength. He then meets other children that Abe told him about. Emma, the girl who levitates unless she wears metal shoes. Two masked twins. Olive, the girl who can control fire with her mind. Bronwyn, the one who lifted him and has superhuman strength. And Millard, the invisible boy. Jake accuses them of being dead, but they deny it. He asks them if he's dead, but they also say no. The children guide him to a cave. Where the portal is located. As he exits the cave, he runs to the pub where they checked in. However, it is now filled with customers. The pub manager does not let him go upstairs, where his staff are supposed to be. Jake is puzzled by what is happening as customers of the pub threaten him and conspire that he is a spy. Out of nowhere, plates and glasses of beer smash the walls of the pub. The peculiar children arrive and intervene to rescue Jake out of there. He quickly realized he is stuck in the 1943 loop for now. He sees warplanes overhead as the pub catches fire because of Olive. They ride a carriage on the way to the home, and Millard reveals that he is the one who started throwing things at the pub. The three of them explain to Jake that they are stuck on the same day, their loop. When they arrive at the home, Jake sees its original facade, full of life and vibrant. Many plants and flowers surround the house. Jake is then brought to meet Miss Peregrine herself. She is a clever and insightful woman who gives too much attention to time, it's because she has the power to control and preserve it. She shares her deepest condolences to Jake as they prepare for some cup of tea. By the garden, Jake meets more peculiar children. Fiona. The girl who can control plants. Claire. The girl with a mouth in the back of her head. Hugh, the boy with bees living in his body. Horace, the boy with prophetic dreams. As they approach Emma, Fiona informs Miss Peregrine that police are knocking at their door because of the pub incident. Jake quickly defends the children by saying that they only want to help him. Miss Peregrine gives them a timid smile and returns to the house. Emma shows Jake her ability, but before that, he ties a rope around her waist. She unbuckles her metal shoes and starts levitating to put a baby squirrel back in the tree. Jake pulls her down as she wears her shoes again. Emma tells Jake that Abe used to do it for her and called it his job. Obviously, she is deeply devastated by Abe's death and still has not moved on. In one of the rooms, Jake meets Enoch, the boy who can bring the dead back to life for a brief time. He is the most intimidating among the children. He shows off this talent using two small skeletal puppets with tiny hearts that fight each other for a short moment. Jake watches as the two puppets have a brawl. Emma helps Jake get ready for dinner by lending him a tie and fixing it for him. In the dining room, Enoch looks annoyed because he is jealous of Jake. Bees start to emerge into the air because of Hugh, but he wears a hat to prevent it. The children ask Jake what the future looks like, but Miss Peregrine interrupts by saying that they should not talk about the future. They all continue to eat, except for Claire, but Jake encourages her to be herself. She smiles and eats the food from behind her neck. Emma walks out after Enoch brings up Abe and how he left. Miss Peregrine receives a phone call from young Abe. In the living room, Horace's dreams are projected. Although it is primarily random, his dreams also predict the future. They see a woman being wheeled away by villainous men. He dreams of Emma and Jake sharing a kiss, which makes Miss Peregrine shut down the projector. They all head outside for the reset. They are stuck on September 3, 1943, during the World War II raids, moments before a bomb would drop on the house and kill everyone. They wear a mask and look at the planes overhead, waiting for the bomb. Before it could fall, Miss Peregrine sets the clock back to 24 hours earlier. They cannot live outside the loop, or else their years will catch up to them, and they will die. Emma brings Jake back to the cave. He shows her what a phone is. They take a picture together. Meanwhile, the bird then flies into the cave and hits the wall. Emma brings it back to the home to be treated. Jake walks back and sees his father looking for him all around. A farmer calls them over to ask about his sheep, who have all died mysteriously. They return to the room, and Jake finds a letter that Abe wrote to Miss Peregrine, which warns her about someone named Mr. Barron and tells Miss Avocet, another headmistress of a home peculiars, to create a new loop as soon as possible. Jake and Frank head to the beach and meet an ornithologist who researches rare birds. This discourages Frank from taking photos of birds, and he decides to stay in the room to sleep. This gives Jake a chance to sneak out. Miss Peregrine is treating the bird, who is truly Miss Avocet, the same woman seen in Horace's dream, and in Weinbrine just like Miss Peregrine, which gives them an ability to turn into birds. Jake questions Miss Peregrine about Baron, but she avoids giving answers. He comes across Enoch and Olive. Enoch brings Jake over to Victor's room, Bronwyn's brother, who was killed by the same creature as Abe. His eyes are missing, and Enoch reanimates him like a puppet to scare Jake. 
he runs downstairs and sees the rest of the children about to go for their daily walks. Back in the home, Miss Peregrine visits Victor and gives him a motherly hug, even though he is now a lifeless body. Emma takes Jake to her secret hideout, which is a sunken ship deep beneath the ocean. Jake thinks that Emma would drown, but she didn't. She blows him an air bubble so he could breathe underwater and then blows the water out of the ship. The shipwreck is now completely dry. She brings out a box that Abe entrusted to her. Emma shows Jake photos of pale-eyed people, including Mr. Baron, whom Jake recognizes as the man outside Abe's house the night he died. She reveals that Baron is the leader of Bad Peculiars, and he hunts down loops in order to kill. Emma then tells Jake that he belongs to the Peculiar world, he denies it and says that he is ordinary. To convince him brings Jake to watch Miss Peregrine walk with her crossbow over by a spot with a chalk outline of a creature. She is trying to hunt down the beast that killed Victor. A tall, eyeless monster similar to the one Jake saw in the woods emerges, but it is only visible to him. Miss Peregrine shoots the gruesome creature with an arrow, and it falls perfectly into the outline. Emma realizes that Jake's peculiarity is being able to see these monsters. Back at the house, Emma brings Miss Peregrine her book to explain who these creatures are. She reveals that Baron and his cronies are hologasts, a different group of peculiars that hunt the good ones to live beyond the loops and live forever. She continues to tell that Baron performed an experiment using Miss Avocet because of her powers, but it backfired and turned him and the other hollows into monsters. They managed to return to their human forms by consuming the eyes of other peculiars, especially the children. The more eyes they eat, the more human-like they appear. This gives Jake the realization that Baron ate his grandfather's eyes. Miss Avocet awakens and has now taken her human form. Afraid that Baron will come after the children, Miss Peregrine decides it is time to leave and find a new home in Loop. Emma and Jake argue because he does not want to go with them to another loop. He decides to go back through the portal. Jake returns by the beach and finds Frank worried sick. Augie is found dead by the rocks with his eyes missing as if something attacked him. Jake realizes that he has to warn the peculiars. His father stops him and says that it is dangerous to roam around when a lunatic is at large. However, Jake runs into the cave, and the ornithologist follows him. Jake hears the man, and the man admits that he is also peculiar. He then takes the form and appearance of Dr. Golan before revealing himself to be Baron. He introduces himself and continues to say that he also saw Jake at Abe's home. He turns his hand into a blade and holds it to Jake's throat to make him do as he says. While the peculiar children pack their things to transfer to another loop, Baron forces Jake to take him to Miss Peregrine's home. Miss Peregrine opens the door and is worried about the well-being of the children. Baron comes in and orders the children to come to him. However, the children only listen to Miss Peregrine when she tells them to retreat for their safety, knowing that Baron is waiting for his hollow friend to go after them. Jake being able to see them is their only hope for survival. Miss Peregrine sacrifices herself to come with Baron accordingly in exchange for the children's safety. Miss Peregrine bids goodbye to the children dramatically. She asks Jake to promise that he will do everything to look after the children should anything happen to her. He nods, and she turns into a bird so that Baron may cage her. Jake and Miss Avocet take the lead and help keep the children hidden in darkness when the hollows decide to show up. Jake then answers the phone to hear a call from young Abe in 1943. Abe does not know Jake as he has not met him yet. Jake takes the time to say he wished he could have been a better grandson to him. As Miss Avocet instructs the children what to do, she is pulled through a wall by the hollow. The children shriek in fear. Jake guides the children to safety and fights the hollow with Miss Peregrine's crossbow. The hollow enters, but it attacks Enoch after he tries to do something about it. Jake struggles to aim correctly. The hollow throws Enoch around the room using its long tentacles. The children run to the attic as this happens. Finally, Jake successfully shoots the hollow down just before it gets Enoch's eyes. It continues to follow them into the attic and bangs the door. They try to go out the window as Fiona controls a tree so they can take refuge in it. While they are at the roof, the hollow enters the attic. They make it to the tree safely. Eventually, the German plane drops the bomb on the house, killing the hollow. The loop then closes for good, and the children can never return to that home forever. Without knowing what to do, they head to the beach and plan to leave the island. All of the children work together to raise Emma's wrecked ship to the surface so they may head over to Blackpool, where there is another loop. They use their strength and abilities to revive the ship. Successfully, it works, and they are set for the sail. Emma explains that since this loop was created in January 2016, they realize that they may prevent Abe's death from happening if they kill Baron there. They show the map to the rest of the Peculiars and explain how timing is essential. They are all in a race against time. They arrive at the Pier of Blackpool, which is a place that is very unfamiliar to them. 
All of them go through a haunted house where the hollows are set to perform their experiment with Miss Peregrine and another Weinbrins. Jake and Emma enter the Blackpool Tower and try to lure some hollows outside toward the pier. Emma unbuckles her shoes to catch Baron's attention and reveals that they managed to kill the hollow that attacked their home. They are successful at bringing the hollows to the pier. Passersby are amazed to see Emma levitate. She gets stuck in one of the cable wires. A train is about to approach, Jake pulls her and saves her life. One of the hollows following them gets dragged by the train. Once the hollows reach the pier, the peculiar children fight back. They throw snowballs and cotton candy at the hollows so they can be seen in broad daylight. Meanwhile, Enoch brings some skeletons to life, which chase the hollows and start slaying and fighting them. This all happens while non-peculiar people can see them. The skeletons successfully bring multiple hollows down in various ways. Bronwyn takes a horse off the merry-go-round and throws it at a hollow, throwing him into the water. People start panicking as they exit the amusement park. All of them head to the Blackpool Tower in hopes of saving Miss Peregrine. The other children fight Baron and his two hollow friends, Emma blows a strong wind toward Baron while Hugh lets bees out to attack the other hollows. The female hollow climbs the bars and starts throwing knives at the children as instructed by Baron. Meanwhile, Enoch attacks, but Baron manages to stop him. Olive also tries to set him on fire, but he knocks her down. After Jake misses a shot with a crossbow, Bronwyn throws a cinema chair at Baron to distract him for a while. Baron manages to take the crossbow as Horace tries to flash a bright light at him but fails. The male hollow tries to freeze and drown Bronwyn under a pool of water, but Fiona stops him by throwing seeds at him. In a moment, it sprouts vines that wrap around and strangles him. On the way to the Weinbrins, Emma manages to bid time by blowing a strong breeze toward Baron again. Olive tries to free Bronwyn, but the male hollow starts to freeze Olive up, which is her weakness. Enoch manages to bring an elephant puppet to life and uses it to crush the hollow. The female hollow tries to attack the younger ones, but she turns to stone after the twins remove their masks and stare at her. Olive turns frozen and ice cold. Enoch says his apologies for not being able to protect her. When it looks like she's dead, Olive is revived and responds to Enoch. Exhausted for giving out too much air, Emma stops, making Baron able to function again. Jake frees the Weinbrins and angers Baron. The birds fly freely to find and create other loops to bring the children to safety. Emma and Enoch see Jake, but Baron also takes Jake's form to trick them. Now confused, Jake must prove that he is the real one. Both of them take turns in talking. One hollow appears from behind. Jake is able to prove himself when he spots the last hollow walking behind them. It attacks Baron and eats his eyes, thinking that it was Jake. They manage to take the hollow down using a crossbow. The children then leave board the ship to stay within their loop, but Jake knows it means he cannot see them again. One by one, the peculiars hug Jake as they bid farewell. Emma tries to console Jake that they will be safe now that Baron is gone. They hug each other, and Emma leaves. Abe checks his phone as the pier changes over time and as time loops. Upon returning to Florida, Jake goes by his grandfather's house and realizes that he is still alive. He tells Abe all about his experiences with Miss Peregrine's home and the children. Abe gives Jake his birthday present, the Emerson book, it contains a lot of money for his journey. He persuades Jake to go after the children as he belongs there. Jake runs on the docks to catch up to the children's ship. He finds Emma and explains that he went through different loops in different cities over different years. He went to multiple cities around the world to see her again. She stops and kisses him. As he joins them on their travels, Miss Peregrine flies overhead and stops at a tower. She finally finds the children and flies over to their ship to reunite with them again. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.